Alex for like providing such a detailed insight into the entire system and you know different components uh, of the graph core. Um, and I think now uh, it's the time for where we put all together and as users, we you know try to understand and learn, you know run some models um, and see how we can train different uh, science cases. Um, it can be different kinds of AI models uh, and kind of this uh, session, it's for the users here and the attendees to try, um, but I, I will definitely go through, you know, um, a reminder from yesterday's uh, session, how to log into the system and also kind of try to uh, show how to run some of the uh, larger examples. Uh, so let me share my screen. Um, but yeah, I, I really encourage folks to try out um, and please let us know. This is a good time for you to uh, like raise your hands and ask questions. And um, of course, you can use the chat window for it, uh, but we can also debug your uh, issues or concerns um, live. Uh, having said that, uh, let's let me share my screen. Can you all see my screen? Yes. Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Uh, thanks. Um, so yeah, uh, I think as the as a starter to like getting any of your models up and running on the ALCF cluster um, of the graph core. Uh, so there are, I think, two essential uh, places where you can get most of the information from. Uh, like how Bill explained yesterday, this is the ALCF website uh, for the AI testbeds. Um, and you also have the graph core system included here. Here you have a detailed uh, description as to how to log in the system. Um, especially create the virtual environment. Um, and by that, you'll know what is the latest SDK that has that is being uh, you know used on the uh, graph core cluster here at the ALCF. Uh, and also you have a bunch of uh, examples um, just as a you know starter to see and run uh, some of them, uh, especially in the example program page. Uh, you have a GPT model and the ResNet model here. Um, but, and it'll kind of show you how to customize uh, the model that is already available in the garden model garden from the graph core examples GitHub repo. Um, and then how do you, or what is the necessary requirements and changes uh, that you need to um, use and run it on the ALCF cluster. Uh, one major, um, note that we all would want to probably uh, keep in mind is when running all these examples on the uh, ALCF cluster, we need to use the slurm command uh, because this is the uh, uh, platform we use so that um, this is a scheduler platform that allows each user uh, to run independently and not bump into each other. So uh, this is something um, very specific to the system we have here at the ALCF. Uh, but apart from that, the Python commands and the rest of it, uh, which uh, you can pretty much pick up from the graph core GitHub repo, uh, which is essentially um, here. And I think um, uh, Alex has gone through it multiple times. Uh, in different scenarios. So here um, it also gives a detailed uh, description as to what are the different kinds of models uh, that are available as part of the model zoo. Uh, so uh, mainly you have the computer vision, NLP models, uh, multinodal and, and graph neural network, of course, uh, apart from you know the bunch of other um, uh, use cases. Uh, so here you can go through the different models that are available um, and also try them 
uh, on our system. So as part of, uh, you know, an example, we can try one from a computer vision or a natural language processing. And uh, let's also talk about a bit on how to use a graph neural network, um, especially given that uh, Alex did talk about it in his previous uh, presentation. Uh, so switching gears here. Um, so this, Uh, so here I'm on my terminal and uh, sorry. I cannot hear you, Bill. Okay. Yeah, or Bill, maybe you can uh, put in a text in the chat window. Uh, are you able to see my terminal screen, Murli? Yes, yeah, I can see. Mm -hmm. okay, oh, he's I'll... asking to increase the font size. Oh, okay, sure. Is it better? Yeah, I think it looks good. Yeah. Okay. Um. So here, uh, you just you know uh, log into the login node, um, and. Of course, I would have done this in advance. I I do not want to uh, repeat it again here. Um, and then, of course, you uh, it is helpful to log into you know either of the, the in order to reach the compute node, you can use uh, zero, two, three, and four uh, login nodes. Um, zero one is not available so i'm just randomly choosing one of the um compute node here and uh, and this is uh, how you just log in to the system uh now i already have probably set up uh, the github repo uh, which is essentially just git cloning uh, the original uh, GitHub repository here, um, and then just um, I'm just using that. Uh, so as part of the first example, uh, maybe we can go through um, a ResNet model, which is under the vision, um, and you have the CNNs and PyTorch. Um, I guess uh, that's where we are at. Uh, but before that, probably it's good to talk about some of these environmental variables that needs to be uh, set before um, you know uh, trying to run. Um, so these are also readily available on the ALCF website. Uh, but this is just like uh, specifying the uh, pop torch cache directory so that any compilation graph as part of the training process is saved and you can reuse it uh, at a later time. And of course you want to um, check where, you know, put provide the path, system path for the Python path here for the uh, popular SDK uh, that is already pre-downloaded uh, by the sysadmins here at the ALCF. So these are some of the essential um, export the variables or environmental variables that you would want to explore uh, and export here uh, before training any of your models. Um, and then uh, one of the most essential part is to set up your virtual environment. Uh, as of uh, default, the popular SDK is already set up, uh, which is at 3.3.0 at this point of time. Uh, but of course, there you can also change the versions uh, if it is downloaded on the system. Uh, the instructions to do so are available on the ALCF website. Uh, so please uh, go through those instructions if by any uh, need you need to change uh, the SDK version. So this is a uh, similar, you know, simple way to create 
a new environment, uh, which I have already done so. Um, and and I, I just need to source that particular environment. Um, and I have all the required libraries installed uh, in that particular uh, environment. Uh, again, you just, you can have your specify the popular SDK road and install all the different wheels. Um, so if you just go through the different, uh, if you go through the directory here, um, you can see you have the pop torch um, wheel present. So this is the most essential one while you're running any pop torch module. Uh, or, or model, um, and some of them with, uh, specifically, which is a GNN example, requires PyTorch geometric, um, and that's available here as well. Uh, and if you're interested in TensorFlow uh, models, um, then probably you would uh, try to use uh, this uh, instead of the PopTorch one. Uh, of course, all the instructions um, to use are available uh, on the website. Um, and as Bill mentioned yesterday too, uh, it is also specific to the, uh, the processor that we have our hands. So be mindful of which one you're using. Uh, and, and since the TensorFlow is the AMD processor here, so you use the AMD one uh, over here. Uh, so that's pretty much with the environment and so on. Um, so, uh, so once you, you know, uh, reach the PyTorch example, uh, you would probably want to, uh, install the required, uh, packages specific to that particular, um, example. So here, uh, it requires the, um, I, I think it's it's fine with that particular example. Uh, and one note for the resident specific example is probably you would want to change uh, the con uh, config file uh, to set the bbox and for to false. Um, and as I specified earlier, uh, it's important to uh, specify the uh, PyTorch um, cache directory before um, ru before running oh, I did not... yeah before just running your model so it's just still building uh, the jpeg library uh, and now we set the PyTorch cache directory. Um, and for um, the ResNet example here, uh, we are using a pop run. Pop run is essentially just a wrapper uh, on the MPI run. Um, and the reason we're doing the MPI run here is um, that the uh, vision models are usually quite I will bound, so you would want uh, more processes to be uh, helpful in uh, data pre-processing um, and sending the data to, uh, or preparing the data essentially before sending it to the device. Uh, so you, you, it is good to have uh, multiple processes, uh, but again, the, this is specific to the kind of um, model we have at hand, uh, not, Every model requires multiple processes here on uh, the CPU. So uh, you can use just one for any other um, not so IO bound models. Um, so here um, we are just uh, using Popran so that our data pre processing is uh, faster. Uh, but apart from that, um, uh, the, you have a number of replicas which is essentially how many instances uh, you're going to replicate over the different 
um, IPUs, and we are using like essentially four uh, here. Um, and the other um, uh, you know, arguments are pretty self-explanatory in the sense here we are using the ResNet 50 um, uh, config, uh, which spans at, which requires at least like four uh, replicas. Um, I think I, um, you know, made a mistake in saying the number of replicas here is like how many IPUs um, you're using there and probably the number of instances is one. Um, and then you also want uh, the data set uh, to be provided. Um, and then, yeah, the, the other ones are pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, um, so this is um, essentially just what is required to uh, train a ResNet 50 model. Um, so one way is to just, uh, you know, uh, put this in a batch script. Um, and of course, the most essential part is that you need the srun command or the slurm command provide how many number of IPUs you are using for this particular model. Um, and then of course you can, um, in you know, initiate the, uh, script uh, here. So um, we just can do that. And, and as you see, uh, when you provide the SRN, there's, you're waiting for the resources here. Uh, while you're doing so, um, one way is to check if you have any, um, uh, any, you, you can use the SQ command to check if anyone else is running, what are the different uh, resources that are available, um, and, where, and what's the status of each of them. Uh, as, as you can see here, I think uh, there's one more person or one more user who is using uh, simultaneously. Uh, so... Yeah, I guess um, the user here got the resources here, and probably my run is on pending. Let me check. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad, like, quite a few folks uh, are able to log in and they are able to try. Um, of course, we are blocked at this point of time by the other users, maybe. Okay. Sorry, my bad. Um, I think yeah, the you need to provide the same command inside the train because the uh, script is available inside the train over there. Here you go. I think now it should be able to run. Um, yeah, I see that uh, the user Jomar21 and Shirley, you at least Shirley was able to get onto the system and have something run. So is there something that uh, stopped the run? Were there any errors? Uh, do you wanna share with the group here? Uh, yeah, this is Shirley. Yeah, I did get an error trying to run the SCH net. Okay, uh, can you, uh, uh, we can come back uh, to that uh, particular yeah, it was a file permission error, so I may be able to figure it out. Yeah, I, I think I, I know what's uh, happening. So we will come to that next. So okay. um, yeah, maybe then you can just fix it and you're able to run. So yeah, um, now this particular um, example, the ResNet one is running. Um, it just says, uh, the allocation was successful, and then you have the pop run, and now it it got the 
IPUs and it attached to the device. And, and this is essentially the uh, command um, that the MPI, uh, the pop run command maps to here. Um, and then it just gets the global batch size and it's loading the data. And, and pretty much that's, that's what goes on. Um, we, uh, maybe I have run it before. So we may not have to, yeah. So this, this is essentially something that I ran before, um, the workshop. So, uh, yeah, you were loading the data, then you create the model. Of course, there's some bunch of, um, and then you have, you, you have the model here. Um, and, and, and essentially that's, that's pretty much what will show that, you know, the training has started and you'll see, um, the different, uh, maybe some warnings are there, but uh, if you go at the end, you will just see the loss. Um, then, so the first you'll you'll be able to see the graph compilation how it progresses. Um, I think essentially uh, the graph compilation process is the one that takes the most most amount of time, but that's like a one time. Um, uh, process that you have to follow. Um, but after that, you can see the epochs, the accuracy, and of course, the different metrics uh, that you would want. Um, and, and, and then that's it. So uh, the, this would be, you know, a good example for the vision model. Um, and then uh, I think uh, the, uh, the graph uh, neural net model, which is the uh, SCH net. Um, I think that's that's a good example now uh, to try. Uh, of course, the graph compilation of the previous ResNet is, is still ongoing. Um, maybe I did not provide the uh, previous uh, graph core, uh, the cache directory for that. Uh, so it's, it's recompiling again. Um, but anyway, we can we can come back to that later. Um, so as part of the um, another example that we probably now is a good time to check is the uh, SCH net. Uh, of course, uh, this is the uh, link to that. You have it in examples, GNN, SCH net, and the PyTorch geometric. Um, so, uh, as part of that, um, I think one setting that, um, so, uh, surely I think one of the important aspects of it is that you will have to, uh, like initiate or install the Python geometric, um, uh, software wheel, um, and that's, uh, essential to get all the required uh, libraries and packages. Um, and then once you have that, of course, you also need the app specific uh, installations. Um, but what I have found is that um, you need this X popular export uh, executable cache directory for this particular um, app. Um, so maybe I it's a good thing to just uh, I have I've pasted it in the chat so that you can use it. And another um and that's pretty much uh, the necessary, uh, you know, steps that you need to follow before initiating the actual slurm command with the Python um, command. And here, this particular script uses again four IPUs, uh, so that's why you're providing the number of IPUs as four here. 
uh, then you have this Slurm command, and, and then this pretty much is the uh, Python script. Uh, of course, you could, uh, Alex did go through partly um, uh, using the Jupyter Notebook, but that's pretty much same uh, inside that uh, Python script as well. Um, so I had a question here. Um, just curious why uh, Popular 01 is not available. It's, it's just for, uh, you know, uh, some admin uh, and management process. Uh, so that's the reason it's it's not available to the other users. But uh, essentially the node uh, as such or the IPUs inside that particular compute node can be accessed from any of uh, the other login nodes as well. So you really don't have to uh, be dependent on that particular login node. It's, it's just that the, that particular login node is blocked. Um, so we are waiting on resources at this point of time. Uh, let me check if these are pretty much warnings that's going on. Uh, so surely were you able to uh, get through that particular Edit. Oh, well, I set that environment rail, but I didn't want to block you. So I wasn't, wasn't trying to run again yet. Oh, that, that's fine. If, um, you know, you can uh, run, uh, if there is any resource available, it will always be able to, um, you, you can run in parallel. So uh, oh, okay. and I'm just using just four IPUs uh, at this okay. point of time, four plus four. So you have plenty at your disposal. Okay. All right. I'll try the one again. Sure. Great. So as you can see, um, I think I had just compiled it before, so it did not take much of time. Uh, it did load uh, the previous graph uh, from the cache directory that was provided. Um, and SCH, you can see um, that it would have used the QM9 uh, data set. It's just processing um, the data here. Um, and then it's already started to train. Um, so yeah, uh, you can see the loss, of course, the progress um, and the time taken for each of these iterations. I think the SCH net is much faster. So I think once I'm done, uh, you know, other users can try as well. Uh, okay. We can come back to that later. Yeah, looks like you were able to run, uh, at least starting to get the resource and run, starting to run it successfully. Yeah, um, so the SCHNet, um, the GNN model that was trained and it got completed. So now if you take a look at the queue, um, none of my, um, uh, my username is not available there anymore, which means it has completed um, 
and then we have two other uh, models that are being run uh, at the same time. So we completed a, a vision model. We uh, went through a GNN model. Uh, probably another good example uh, would be the NLP. Um, so the NLP model, um, it's well described uh, here on the ALCF website. Uh, so you have a GP2 PyTorch pot 16 um, run. Uh, so essentially, um, this requires 16 IPUs uh, to run this particular configuration. Uh, again, the you know you set up the environment pretty much as described uh, for any other pop torch uh, example, um, and then you need the specific uh, packages that are required for the GPT two. Uh, and as such, um, of course, you, I mean by now we're um, comfortably aware of this S run command and total number of IPUs that we need to provide. Uh, but as such, the Python command itself, it's just uh, using the train underscore GPT two, the model, um, and of course the IPUs uh, per replica. Um, so which which means one instance um, of this uh, model run requires like four uh, IPUs and you're replicating that like four times, uh, which is essentially meaning that you have a data parallel that is um, having like four instances of it. So you're essentially using 16 uh, IPUs uh, and you can specify the gradient accumulation um, that is required. Uh, and then the device iterations, uh, I know Alex briefly uh, mentioned it in one of his presentations, um, that device iterations are useful um, when you wanna load the data into the device uh, for more than what the batch requires. So multiple uh, batches of data are loaded uh, at once. Um, and then the device do not have to come uh, back and forth uh, during this uh, time. And, and, this, uh, and this time can be overlapped with prefetching the other uh, data and pre-processing that as well. Um, so you need the others are pretty much self-explanatory in the sense you have the batch size and then um, the different layers per IPU. Uh, I think this, this is pretty much like the embedding uh, part is on layer zero, and then uh, you have each of the four layers on, on the different uh, IPUs. Then you specify the sequence length, the optimizer, um, and then that's pretty much all the specific GPT-2 um, of course, here, uh, the data, I'm just using a simple generated data, but uh, you can pre-process your custom data set uh, and uh, tokenize it and, and provide uh, the actual um, user-generated data. And all these steps are available in and, and how to provide those data. Everything is available uh, in the readme files um, if you go through uh, here. Um, and it has a really detailed explanation of how you set up uh, the training and, and the data pre-processing part um, so that uh, you can go through at your uh, leisure. Um, so yeah, uh, with the GPT-2, this is essentially what uh, we would be doing. Um, and if you go through here, uh, that's that's pretty much what I um, have done here. I've uh, used a session. I've, I've just used the sim same uh, pop torch environment that I created. Uh, I had all the installations uh, already available from pop torch and as well as uh, the ones that's required for the GP2. Um, maybe it requires more resource. Um, Yeah, I think it'll, we'll get the resources. Um, but yeah, this is essentially what I just did over here. Um, I have uh, provided 
this GP2 uh, command, um, and you can see that this is the model initialization and the device allocation. You see the model config. Um, if this is a simple GP2 model, um, and uh, it's just the data is loaded, it's with the generated data, so it did not take too much of time. Uh, and the training um, has begun. And initially, you will have the graph compilation, which uh, takes up quite a bit of time when you are doing it for the first time. Um, but once it's available, um, you can just load uh, that onto the device. And then uh, you can see uh, the epochs uh, that are run. Um, yeah, and, and this is pretty much self-explanatory in the sense of the metrics um, that's involved uh, in training these, uh, in this training this GPD-2 model. So that's that's pretty much what is going on and, and you'll see that uh, here. Um, so that's, that's pretty much uh, what I had in terms of the different models, but of course, you're always uh, welcome to go and choose the you know a diverse set of models here uh, and try to replicate that on our system and you can uh, customize it to your data set um, and then also try out uh, you know um, for your own data maybe uh, some other models that are uh, available over there um, but one important aspect is that any of these examples that you want to try should be preceded with a slurm command because without that, uh, it will not run on our system. Uh, and that piece of information, of course, will uh, is specific to the ALCF cluster. So uh, you will not find it on, on this um, examples good repo. But uh, apart from that, this is a great source uh, of different uh, use cases, different models, uh, that you can try. Uh, there are also a good resource of you know different data sets that you can use uh, for different um, or for the open uh, set, uh, open data set, uh, and you can um, probably replicate that and 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 learn from it. Um, any questions? So I ran the vision models that is specifically under the vision and CNNs uh, PyTorch, uh, but there is a possibility that there are different configurations here. Uh, and I think it's under the train. Yeah, there are different configurations uh, available for you. Here you have the ResNet 50 uh, model, but ResNet uh, Pod 4 model, um, which uses the ResNet 50 on uh, with four uh, pods, uh, which is essentially four nodes, uh, four IPUs. Uh, and then you also have a efficient net um, that you can use. Uh, yeah, uh, so there are a bunch of different, uh, you know, vision models as part of the same setup. So you can choose whichever config um, that you want to try. But I tried the ResNet uh, 50 port 4. Um, that's, that's, that's what, um, the, that was the one that I ran. Um, 